I'm sick of it. Are you sick of it? This war? I hate dumb wars. This is a war of choice. It should not be being waged right now. And war is terrible when armies clash with other armies. It's even worse when armies clash with innocent civilians, women and children. And that's what's been happening in Ukraine uh, every day of this conflict. Now, the first moment, silent movie, there's no audio, but a residential neighborhood hit. So we have lots of pictures, but finding out what's really happening over there is a little bit like looking through a straw and pointing at the sky at night and trying to understand the universe. I mean, there is a lot going on. It is confusing. They talk about the fog of war, but we knew to know this. Putin is not as smart as a lot of people thought he was, okay? I, I kept hearing, oh, Putin, he's a geopolitical genius, a master of the game. Not so much, and it looks like he made some fundamental miscalculations. And by the way, no matter how smart you are, everybody who wages a war, certainly a war of choice, makes some fundamental miscalculations. War usually is a miscalculation. It is based upon assumptions that don't pan out, things that you believe to be true or want to be true. It never quite works out that way. A uh, very interesting piece in the New Yorker of all places. And as for Putin, some big time miscalculations. He totally misread the Ukrainian people, right? He assumed the Ukrainians were weak and they couldn't or wouldn't fight, right? Wrong. They have been amazing and it has shocked some of the Russians in the Kremlin. Also, Zelensky. Who knew this guy was such a leader? Uh, he assumed that Zelensky was weak and incompetent, but he couldn't have been more wrong. We've all seen Zelensky. He's everywhere all the time. He is truly leading. Now, this miscalculation, you can, in a weird way, give Putin something of a pass on. Uh, nobody knew that this guy had it in him. He was a comedian. He was not living up to a lot of the promises he made during his campaign, and he was doing very poorly in the polls pre-invasion. About 25% of the population liked this guy. Now it's 99% of the population, and for good reason, all right? We're watching it. Also, as far as miscalculations go, Putin does not have the information he needs to make valid calculations. He is not being told information he does not want to hear. Uh, who remembers when he, the, the intel chief stood up and said, uh, we think you should consider a couple of other things, and he shut him down right in front of everybody. Поддерживаю предложение о вхождении Донецкой и Луганской народных республик в состав Российской Федерации. Мы об этом мы об этом не говорим, мы этого не обсуждаем. Мы говорим мы говорим о признании их независимости или нет. Да. Я поддерживаю предложение о признании независимости. Хорошо, пожалуйста, садитесь. Спасибо. All right. Now we don't speak the language, but that was a major, major public slapdown. Um, Mediocre people around him, that has some advantages. They don't gather to uh, take power from him. They're too inept to do that, but they don't have, they're not very good at their jobs. Take his defense minister, a guy named uh, Sergei uh, Sogru, I believe. He spent most of his life as a construction manager. Uh, this uniform he's wearing, I don't think he rates most of those medals. Uh, he's just a guy who was friendly with Putin. Let's put his resume up on the board, please. You see this stuff? I mean, uh, civil engineering, uh, Ministry of uh, Emergency Situations, no military background, uh, wasn't in the military, and of course, never saw combat. So as much as we don't like Russia right now, we have to remember this. You got to give them a way out, a face-saving way out. Build your opponent a golden bridge to retreat across, according to Sun Tzu, the famous Chinese military strategist. I mean, 
if he doesn't have a way out, if he fights to the death, if he annihilates all of Ukraine because he has no other option, that's a lot worse. He needs a way out and he needs to be provided a way out. And I think that Donald Trump would know that instinctively. Don't you? <laughs> I, I, most of us believe that this would not be happening if he were still in power because he had a knack actually for not starting wars. This is from the rally the other night. The fake news said my personality would get us into a war. I'm telling you, that guy's going to get us into a war. But actually, my personality is what kept us out of war. I was the only president in nearly four decades who did not get America into any new conflicts. Instead, I brought our troops and our wonderful children back home. I brought them back home where they belong. It's actually longer than four decades. Uh, he sells himself short. The fake news always tries to say, oh, this is not, it is true. It is absolutely true. Let's take a look, shall we? Wars started by presidents over the years, or at least were involved in, or had some sort of role. They happened on their watch, the Libyan Civil War in 2011. Yes, that actually happened. George W. Bush, we know all about that. Uh, Bill Clinton, uh, left and right, there were conflicts uh, on his watch. George H.W. Bush, of course, yes. Um, even Ronald Reagan, and we love Reagan. Uh, yes, he had these to contend with. And uh, Jimmy Carter, of course, the Iran debacle. Even Gerald Ford had some uh, incidents to deal with. The Mayaguez incident, very famous. Richard Nixon, invasion of Cambodia. A lot of folks did not like that. Lyndon Johnson, well, I mean, obviously, the Vietnam War was already underway, but greatly, greatly expanded it. John F. Kennedy, the Bay of Pigs. And Eisenhower, a lot of people don't associate him with the Vietnam War, but yes, the Vietnam War started on his watch. President Trump, when he talks about that, oh, Harry S. Truman, I'm sorry, don't want to forget him. Yes, the Korean War. Um, a lot of this is, you know, some of these wars may have been justified, but Donald Trump is not misleading people when he says no new wars, no new conflicts under his watch. These were already ongoing um, events, and he was perhaps involved, but they were ongoing. He inherited them or stopped them. Have you heard about the big companies who are canceling uh, business operations in Russia? A lot of big names. However, some are sticking around. Microsoft, Microsoft is still over there. They suspended new sales in Russia, uh, but they continue to support existing customers and they're providing access to Windows software and, and Xbox games. You gotta keep those kids uh, engaged, I guess, I guess. It's pretty interesting though, Microsoft, you know, they, they are one of the wokest companies out there. This is how they started a recent webinar, you know, web training for their employees. Take a look. Hello and welcome to Microsoft Ignite. We've got a big day ahead and lots in store for you. First, we want to acknowledge that the land where the Microsoft campus is situated was traditionally occupied by the Sammamish, the Duwamish, the Snoqualmie, the Suquamish, the Muckleshoot, the Snohomish, the Tulalip, and other Coast Salish peoples since time immemorial. A people that are still here, continuing to honor and bring to light their ancient heritage. What about the current heritage of Ukraine, okay? <laughs> Isn't it, you act this virtuous about ancient Indian cultures that you know nothing about, and somehow it gives you moral authority to do whatever you want, like continue to do business with Russia. Uh, uh, what else did she say? My name is Allison Wines. I'm a senior program manager in our developer tools division. I'm an Asian and white female with dark brown hair wearing a red sleeveless top. Who talks like this, except woke companies so convinced of their righteousness, and then they can do things that they probably shouldn't be doing, like continue to do business in Russia, or maybe with countries that have illegalized homosexuality. You know, you can be put to death in some countries for being gay. It's true, and there are a lot of companies, some of the wokest of the bunch, uh, 
still do business with horrible, horrible regimes. In the meantime, <laughs> those companies give money to politicians who just love to wear the colors of Ukraine, a pretty meaningless gesture. I mean, I guess it's kind of nice, but it doesn't re really mean all that much. And where are we? We are weaker because of what's happening over there. I do blame Joe Biden. I do blame that we don't have President Trump anymore. And I don't think Iran would have launched missiles that came damn near close to our diplomatic facility in Erbil, Iraq this past weekend. Do you? Not in a million years with Trump on the scene.